All right, well, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started. My name is Carlo Finelli. I'm a co-editor here at Alternate Roots. And I want to thank all of you for waking up bright and early on a Friday morning and joining us for this, this conference here that will be exploring some difficult issues at times, but uh, some equally rewarding uh, research that will certainly be discussing ways of moving forward. Uh, this is the third year we're holding this conference here at, uh, at Ryerson, and the, sec uh, and the third we're uh, doing it in conjunction with the Center for Labor Management. I thought I'd start, uh, and I'll be brief here, I just want to keep it to a few minutes, but I thought I'd start by discussing, uh, uh, talking a little bit about Alternate Roots. And as many of you know, Alternate Roots has been around since 1977. And I know it might be difficult to believe, I haven't been editor since 1977. Um, but the journal initially started uh, at Carleton uh, in the Department of Sociology, and it was during that milieu, uh, which also saw uh, studies in political economy launched, uh, also at Carleton. And it was really a time when critical, uh, you know, critical social research, essentially, was really beginning to take off in response to a lot of the mainstream uh, analyses that were either uh, gender and racially blind or uh, class agnostic and so forth. And one of the things we've done, we did when we relaunched Alternate Roots in uh, 2009, because the journal's been pretty consistent in publishing issues, there's been a few years where uh, issues have covered uh, a couple of years, uh, but we've released some 25 issues now. And uh, one of the things we th we really wanted to emphasize when we relaunched in 2009 uh, was to be a public academic journal. And if you look at our our about section here, um, one of the things we explicitly state is that we really focus on non-traditional, provocative, and radical analyses that might might not find a form in conventional venues. And this is something we've been consistently stressing throughout, and um, we're quite proud of what we've accomplished in, in, in our, time, our short time span. Uh, we've been able to attract a number of up-and-coming and noted scholars, including Henry Giroux, Noam Chomsky, Marjorie Griffin Cohen, uh, Jim Stanford, Michael Burrovoy. Uh, going back further, we had John Porter in here, uh, Pat Armstrong, more recently Jamie Peck, Ellen Wood. Uh, and so on and so forth, and, and a number of people here as well who have been contributors over the years. So I don't want to talk too much about the journal, but I just want to highlight the website here because one of the things we've been doing uh, in our mandate, in our quest to be a public academic journal, um, as you can see from the video here and the, the pictures being taken, we actually post uh, all of our videos online for those who are not able to make it. And you can go on the website and catch keynotes from years past, uh, and this is something that's been really successful. We've received emails from around the world on certain uh, topics. This, this is uh, the one on the screen here is from last year's conference on education. Um, so it's been something that's been really successful. Uh, we hope to, to keep it moving forward. And we also have our archives that have been completely digitized and uh, going back to 1977, uh, which has some, uh, some really important issues dealing with a whole range of topics. So I'll just leave that there about the journal. And what, the final thing I just want to mention about the journal uh, again, in our quest to be a public academic journal and doing things a little differently, uh, we're one of the few journals, uh, as many of you know here, uh, that go from conception to execution to uh, a physical copy and an ele electronic copy uh, in about eight months. Uh, that includes uh, peer review and so forth, uh, which is a, a quick way of doing things for, for a lot of journals. So when, when John and I came on board uh, this year for this issue, I was really happy that he, he decided to, to move from being part of our editorial board to a stronger position as a, as a co-editor here. Um, when we were thinking about organizing around the central theme, we were really confronted with depression era levels of unemployment in Europe, the threat of a major deflation across, uh, also across Europe, an end to the unparalleled growth in China as well as slowdown in much of the rest of the global south, uh, uncertainty around to what extent an increasingly insular uh, U.S. economy could propel uh, the world forward. And this was the context really about six months ago when we met. Uh, and six months later today, uh, we find Europe with depression era levels of unemployment, the threat of major deflation and so forth. And part of what we've, uh, part of in, in conceptualizing this, what we've recognized is that the great, the so-called Great Recession, or at least its alleged uh, uh, temporary aspect, has increasingly become uh, a life sentence the world over. So-called quantitative easing or fiscal and monetary policy more generally uh, has really reached a saturation point as the global economy is mired in all kinds of uncertainty. Uh, 
Nevertheless, corporate profits remain as robust as ever, and stock markets around the world reach new heights as the austerity state really leads the attack against public services and in other instances creates the conditions for capital, capital to lead in extracting wage and benefit concessions. So through and through precarious work, low wage, and even no wage work, whether unpaid labor in the sphere of social reproduction or increasingly uh, unpaid internships, for example, which is something we'll be discussing extensively to, uh, today, really proliferates. So now into the fourth decade of neoliberalism, it is really becoming increasingly clear that social inequality and the decline in quality employment is not just cyclical, as many new age or new economy proponents argued, but essentially structural and systemic. Uh, mainstream responses such as demand, so-called demand management uh, via low or lower interest rates will, we believe, do little to close that gap. So these were some of the concerns which we were interested in, ex in exploring, and today we're very pleased that we'll be able to do all that and more. So before I turn it over to John, uh, we, we just want to thank uh, everybody, of course, for making it out. We also want to show our appreciation to the Center for Social Justice Toronto and the Department of Politics for their generous support in helping to see this conference through. We also want to say a very special thank you to the Center for Labor and Management Relations, uh, its past director uh, Maurice Matzerol is here, as well as its current director Gerald Hunt for their ongoing support, as well as our extreme uh, gratitude to Sina and Aman for helping us plan and coordinate uh, today's events. Um, and just a final note, uh, as a conference on uh, precarious work, uh, many of you are aware of the, uh, uh, our colleagues at the University of Toronto uh, have, this, have voted in favour of uh, binding arbitration and uh, and York University workers uh, remain on strike so uh, we're holding this conference with them in mind and uh, I'll pass it over to John. Uh, thanks Carl. Carl. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be very uh, brief because Carl really has uh, uh, touched upon the, uh, the main themes here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as he noted, when we uh, sort of got together uh, a number of months back and sort of uh, talked about, well, what should the uh, theme of this conference uh, be this year, uh, it didn't take very long uh, to figure out that we really should be uh, talking about the state of the labor market, and in particular, the whole issue of uh, low-wage, precarious work, and uh, uh, even no-wage uh, forms of work. Um, this is something that... Uh, has gone from sort of the margins to this, the center of, uh, of debate. It's really sort of caught a lot of uh, uh, steam uh, within the media, and I think for very good reason, because now uh, these forms of uh, precarious work have become increasingly the norm uh, rather than uh, the exception, and they're affecting broader and broader uh, groups of, uh, of people. Um, we're really uh, we're happy when we uh, uh, did the uh, the announcement for the conference and invited people uh, to uh, uh, come and make uh, uh, proposals, uh, suggestions uh, of the uh, uh, the range of uh, uh, proposals that we got. I think uh, you can see from the uh, conference agenda uh, that we really uh, uh, do uh, have a. Um, uh, a, uh, a very interesting kind of exploration of, of the various kinds of dimensions uh, that uh, uh, we have around low-wage uh, work and precarious uh, forms of work. So I'm quite excited to uh, uh, see, the, see uh, what transpires uh, this afternoon. I think it's going to add uh, to the richness of the ongoing debate that we have uh, around this issue and hopefully also something that's going to uh, uh, have uh, continued influence in terms of, uh, of public policy. I think without uh, further ado, we should get on with our first session. So I'd invite the uh, uh, speakers from the first session maybe to, uh, uh, to come up.